Grim Hollow's monster grimoire has only 48 hours left. With such little time to back such a massive project and 400 monsters packed into one book, why not jump on the bandwagon? Everything will be available for pre-order after the campaign, but this is the only time you'll be able to get all this cool stuff at Kickstarter prices. They're also either scraping the million dollar mark right now, or they hit it by the time this goes up. But that means that the book will also contain a handful of monstrous race guides as a free addition to the contents of the book. And we've already got encounter guides, monster loot guides, a guide on role-playing intelligent monsters which they unlocked, and a bunch of unique and horrific monsters for any grimdark campaign. If you guys like these creepy monsters, or you really enjoy painting a massive assortment of great quality minis, feel more than welcome to check out the campaign, and enjoy the video. Nice little disclaimer here before we get started. The term cryptid is a title of fringe pseudoscience based on folklore. Cultures are cool, and each one has their own customs that are exciting to explore and easy to misinterpret. That being said, Bigfoot's a concept from my people, which are a bunch of drunken rednecks that chase after bears with knives, and forest workers who think that they're smarter than they actually are. So let's look at Bigfoot, who I had no info going into this, and I'm gonna look at it objectively. Jumping back before any of the recent first sightings, you should know that hairy giants are as common in history as dragons, and they're kinda all over the place. In Mongolia, there's a group of giant hairy monsters with huge sloth talons, said to have existed in the Pamir Mountains. We also have the Himalayan Yeti, the Australian Yaoi, and the giant sword-wielding monkey from Sekiro. All things that dotted the world just a few days before email started up, so like dragons, unless some vagabond asshole went all over the world to tell the same joke about a monkey, there's a shadow of a doubt that something like this might have existed. Makes me think of giant sloths, honestly. Florida also has skunk apes. Now, that's a thing that you know. They're like stinky sun bears, that's, that's pretty much it. The most recent and most documented thing we have about the famous Bigfoot, which was actually a lady by the way, is a shaky, grainy film of a dude recording what my academic guess would be a hermit who bought a monkey suit to ward off grizzly bears. I'm not debunking every guess that's been made for like the past 50 years, but what I will admit is that's literally something that I think I would do if I didn't expect a cowboy to come out of the woods and shoot me. Just put on a monkey suit, pump up some plastic bottles with air to explode so I don't have to yell, and bam, no apex predator can touch me or would want to, except for bullets, and viruses, and bacteria, and fungus. At the end of the day, believe what you want. Make a monkey your religion for all I care. I'm here to put Bigfoot in D&D. So global sightings throughout history, some of which describes family, has led me to now fictionally conclude that this is a monstrous race of something that resembles a mix between a black bear and an eastern lowland gorilla. I will also note that the only murders performed by Bigfoot were 100% people killing other people and then trying to get away with it, or rationalizing some tragic shit. Teddy Roosevelt met a mountain man who shakily said that Bigfoot broke his friend's neck, but I think pretty much all of us have seen Smeagol strangle his friend for a lump of gold, so uh... Anyway, so here's my little tick list, including some notes that I haven't mentioned. A lot of body hair wrapped around grey skin that's as tough as stone. A lot of muscle mass and the ability to huck small trees and boulders. An almost fey-like disposition, wanting to mess with people and abduct others out of stupid curiosity. You see that one gorilla that just drags a dude like a few feet? He didn't, he didn't kill him, so it's okay to laugh at his brown pants. Uh, what else? Big bear claws? Is that it? Why do people care so much about this thing? Like, just go get footage of bears and birds and shit. Like, that's real and arguably more interesting, but whatever. Let's cook up a species of monsters. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw together a giant ape, a brown bear, and an orc. They can't be crazy dangerous, and they live in familial cultures with probably weird mating cycles where women go off to look for rednecks with cameras. So they only gotta be a little tough. And they can't be very smart at all. I mean, one of them went out of its way to star in the movie Harry and the Hendersons, which I watched as a kid. He didn't think about the repercussions that would have on me, and for that I give all of them an intelligence of 8. Give them a little claw attack, and overall I don't think they'd be over challenge rating 2 at most, so I'll make them challenge 1. Deadly for commoners to run at with knives, deadly for paleontologists to hunt, and deadlier for the ratings of a movie with that plotline. But adventurers could kill one in the snap of a tree. Also, I'm done writing my book so I can put together an actual stat block for this. 
I'm not going to describe their whole day to day as a culture, just watch that squizzy video, but imagine they eat pine cones instead of bananas. So instead of a cultural exploration, let's do a little encounter. This one doesn't start like the others. It instead would start with a local group of loggers saying that giant monsters are interrupting their work, stealing wood and throwing rocks at them until they stop. Kind of like that scene in Princess Mononoke. Monomonkey. So the party runs around a forest for a sweet minute until they find a track of sunken giant feet in the mud. Follow the tracks and you'll find some weird den of, let's say, 2d6 plus 1 sasquatches, playing with their willies and doing whatever the top of the food chain does in its pastime. So I guess what I said was correct. They probably panic for a bit, because this is their home and it's being intruded. They got stone skin and they're really good at hucking logs and other rocks, so it could get pretty tense at range. I do think that the Bigfoots would give up pretty quickly and run a distance away after they got hurt or if any of them died, only continuing to fight if pursued or cornered. A smart party would conclude that, no shit, loggers are the ones getting attacked, they're attacking the Bigfoot's home. I'd say a good resolution to this encounter would be to teach the loggers and or the Bigfoots to reforest, and a neutral resolution would be to have the loggers not work in this part of the forest, and the hack and slash option of just wiping out these people. That's kind of it. It might be fun to have one as a pet, like in that incredible movie that I mentioned that didn't scar me at all. And since it's a race, would you want to play a Bigfoot? Well, a prerequisite to playing one is the ability to pick your nose with your feet. And if you can do that, good job. Just roleplay as yourself. Nasty ass. That's my video.